All right. So let's see, case four, 55 year old man with a posterior neck mass. Let's see, can I go? No, it's as low as I can go. Low power. All right, so what do you think about this one? Yeah, so we see that there is uh, this intermix fat, and then there's uh, this collagenous component uh, to this. Um, I believe that there is rookie collagen in this. Good, yes. Uh, so I was... All the buzzwords you're saying, good. Yeah, so I was... And then you see some um, nuclei that are pleomorphic. Yeah. And what kind of shape would you describe some of the pleomorphic cells have it? Not, maybe there's a good one over here. People have a... a, like a Teuton? Yeah, or I never actually heard it described that way, but that works perfectly because Teuton giant cells have ring-shaped, wreath-shaped nuclei, right? So people describe these as floret cells or wreath cells that you get this kind of pleomorphic hyperchromatic nuclei, but they tend to be arranged in these kind of little irregular rings that look like petals on a flower, so kind of the floret or a little bit wreath-like. And I like that Teuton, like that actually is really good. Thank you. I'm going to start using that because, you know, everyone uses different, I always like to say this, that just because a visual clue or buzzword is in the literature doesn't mean that it works for you. And the point of visual buzzwords is that it's something that when you see it, you're like, oh, that looks like that thing. And then you get the diagnosis figured out. So if you don't like the buzzwords that the, the forefathers taught us, yeah, throw them out. I mean, you don't have to tell anyone, but or you can. Like, I, I say that all the time. I don't like chicken wire. I, there are certain buzzwords I really hate. And so I find the ones that work for my mind. So, yeah. So the, the multinucleated hyperchromatic atypical cells, the ropey collagen, we're seeing it everywhere. All these thick, fat bundles of dense pink collagen. Okay. And then mature adipocytes, right? And so that a mixture of the mixture of those three things is really helpful in arriving at the diagnosis of pleomorphic lipoma. And oftentimes, if, and pleomorphic lipomas, as I know you, you're aware, is on a spectrum with spindle cell lipoma. They are basically one and the same thing, just two different patterns of the same disease. Um, they have uh, usually have a loss of uh, what. What um what's the molecular abnormality in uh, these? They have a deletion of RB1. Yeah, exactly. RB1 loss or deletion. So that's on 13Q. And sometimes they can have 16Q deletion um, instead of 13Q. So if you do immunostains, uh, these tend to be negative for RB1, whereas nuclear RB1 staining should be seen in the background normal cells, but will be lost often in these, particularly these big atypical cells here. So um, uh, it's, not, it's not a totally sensitive. There are some that don't have loss of RB1, but it's a useful finding. Um, and what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah, the, the pattern can range a lot for pleomorphic and spindle cell lipomas. Sometimes there's a bunch of fat and only a little bit of the spindle cells and atypical hyperchromatic cells. Sometimes it's really abundant. Sometimes there's lots of mixoid change, sometimes very little. It can really run a range, and the most common site is going to be the posterior neck or upper back, usually in men. I think the ratio is like it's 9 to 1 or 8 to 1, way more common in men. But it's so common in men compared to women that sometimes people get into the habit of thinking it just can't be this if it's in a woman, but that's not true. And uh, Jennifer Coe and Steve Billings and colleagues at Cleveland Clinic wrote a really nice paper about spindle cell lipomas in women, and I think the same rule applies to pleomorphic lipoma that spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma can occur in women. And interestingly, they found that when, when arising in women, spindle cell lipomas tended to arise in unusual sites, like the extremities or the trunk, elsewhere on the trunk, or other places, not the typical, like kind of shawl area, the, the neck, back, upper back area. So I thought that's really interesting, and it certainly fits with my experience that I've seen things that look like spindle cell lipoma, and occasionally like pleomorphic lipoma, like in the extremities or other places that are not the classic location. So it's a really great paper. Um, I'll try to put a link to that in the video description down below. And I saw it somewhere here, but a bubbly cell it looked like a lipoblast. So that's the other thing is lipoblasts don't always e equal liposarcoma. You can have lipoblasts and multivacuulated cells in a variety of different fatty lesions, and um, including uh, spindle cell and pleomorphic lipomas. Um, occasionally, you can even see some mitoses, even rarely atypical mitotic figures, although there's some debate over what that means, and some people think that we should call lesions like that atypical pleomorphic lipomatous tumor, but that is an uh, evolving area and kind of very muddy waters. I'm not going to go there, um, and I imagine that over time that, that may change a bit. So, um, Okay, so what else would be in the differential for you here? What else? Did you worry about anything else, or again, just like this pleomorphic lipoma, we're done? Uh, well... The liposarc did come on. Sure. Out, 
I feel like there are kind of two, two different ones that I consider. For one thing, I think a lot of people, because big pleomorphic cells, you think pleomorphic liposarcoma. The main thing for pleomorphic liposarcoma is that when you take the lipoblasts away from it, all that you're left with is basically UPS, undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. There has to be like high-grade sarcoma there plus lipoblasts, okay? So here we might have a couple lipoblasts and we have some scattered atypical cells, but in between there's not like, there's not enough cellularity for like a high-grade sarcoma, right? So that's, I think, the most helpful thing is that usually pleomorphic liposarcoma is going to be very cellular, either kind of spindled or epithelioid cells or both, and then lipoblasts. And it usually you look at it and you're like, whoa, that's a sarcoma, like no doubt. So I think the thing that I find um, more tricky is telling apart well-differentiated liposarcoma or atypical lipomatous tumor is the name for that when it's not in the deep sites like the retroperitoneum, when it's in the superficial soft tissues on the trunk or in the extremities, we call it ALT instead of well-diff liposarcoma. And they have scattered hyperchromatic pleomorphic cells, mature fat, and collagen. So a couple uh, tricks that Dr. Weiss taught me is that number one, the collagen pattern in pleomorphic lipomas um, usually are going to be the thick ropey bundles of collagen. And then the collagen pattern in, um, in a, um, in a well-diff liposarcoma is often more like kind of hyalinized, homogenized collagen, real, real dense, homogenous uh, collagen. And uh, that's one thing. So that's one thing that Dr. Weiss said was helpful is the collagen pattern. And number two, Usually, if you look around a pleomorphic lipoma, you'll find some background small uniform spindle cells that look similar to the cells of spindle cell lipoma. Like, you're kind of seeing that here. Admittedly, I think that maybe that's easier for her because she's like a master. I find that sometimes I can find that, but other times I find it difficult to be sure. But, but her point was that well diff liposarcs don't usually have that small component of like uniform kind of spindle to oval cells that are similar to spindle cell lipoma, but pleomorphic lipoma, um, Pleomorphic lipomas usually do have that because, again, they exist on a spectrum with spindle cell lipoma. So you'll find these little uniform cells that kind of resemble the, like the vaguely palisading or parallel arrays. See how the nuclei kind of stack next to each other? It's pretty subtle. But um, so, again, I think that's a very subtle clue, but that's one she pointed out. And, um, oh, yeah, the other big thing is that usually pleomorphic and spindle cell lipoma are small tumors in the subcutis. I have emphasis on the word. Usually there are exceptions. I've seen big ones. And I've seen them rarely in like deep soft tissue sites like the muscle of the thigh. In that setting, I will only accept the diagnosis if I have some molecular evidence to support it because it's very rare in that setting. And on the flip side, well diff liposarc is very rare in the subcutis or skin. I mean, I've seen cases, but it's extremely rare. Um, usually is deep in a deep site and usually large. So those kind of clues can help you. But if you're having a hard time, you can do MDM2 to rule out well diff liposarc. And you can do RV1 if you want to help support um, spindle cell lipoma or pleomorphic lipoma. And these are totally benign, despite how weird and atypical they look. Even with the margins positive, they rarely recur. So I find that um, uh, pretty good to know about. Oh, there, that's a really nice example of a floret cell. Oh, and I think that's the other thing. You don't often see the multinucleated kind of ring-like floret shape in well diff liposarcoma, but I have seen it sometimes. So if I see this even in a site where I like um, in fact, the confession time, the one time I saw cells that looked like this, and it, but it was like a 10 or 12 centimeter mass in like the quadriceps, deep in the thigh. And I even thought, gosh, could this be like a deep pleomorphic lipoma? I talked about it with a sarcoma surgeon and he was like, ah, that doesn't make sense. This is growing like a liposarc. So I said, okay, and I didn't do molecular. I should have gone with my gut. They ended up resecting it, which is probably what I would have wanted anyway for that site. And then when it came out, guess what? It was pleomorphic lipoma. <laughs> MDM2 negative. So I was glad that I thought of it, but also disappointed in myself that I didn't stick with my guns and, and pursue additional workup. And look, see that? Multi-evaculate. It looks like a lipoblast. Right. So you can see some lipoblasts in these sometimes. But the, the wreath-like cells, if you see it, think about pleomorphic lipoma. So we beat that one to death, but these are, these are really confusing for a lot of people, and people get really hung up um, and, can, and uh, can make mistakes about them. So, All right.